What's going on boys? Snog guys here. Welcome back to another Meta Tactics video. Um, I want to give you those usual the weekly update for team of the season. Just in case you're new here, of course, um, we do have a defensive formation one to close the game out. If, for example, you are winning. We have a balanced formation one that you can play attacking and defending. Basically one formation you will start with. We've got one that's a bit more attacking. And then we have the ultra attacking formation, a do or die formation if your opponent's holding the ball. If you're losing one or two nil and you need to get the ball back. Um, so a few changes this week, uh, some of them are very, very important, so do stay tuned with it. Um, what we've done is we've made it some some of these things a bit more defensive. And the reason why is the truth is against Team of the Season, constant pressure is still a big, big issue. And I think it's more of an issue now with Team of the Season players. So arguably, there's a couple of things you should be aware of. Just reduce the, the depth and the well, depth space is the same, but the width just a little bit should be a bit more compact. And the logic behind this is my opponent has the ball and they do win the ball back. We go straight away compact as possible. Because a lot of the times you might see strikers running in between the defender lines. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. I see a lot of team season players do that. Um, so that's why we've done that. Slow build up play as usual to counter. Don't forget to counter constant pressure. Slow build up play is very, very important. That way you can have players taking their time. Because if you go too quickly with the constant pressure, you lose the ball, you have no one behind and no support. So make sure... Slow build up plays the most imperative thing. It's, it's probably the single high, the most important thing that probably helps you against constant pressure. And we know this on balance. Do not use possession, as I mentioned last week. It's counterproductive. Remember, even in basic football, remember, to create space, someone moves away from you. Someone comes towards you, your opponent will come with him and will invite more pressure. Players in the box on corners and free kicks and one. Now, as I mentioned, how does this formation work? So basically, there's no other formation as, uh, which, which has a back five and two CDMs. This one has a back five and two CDMs when you're attacking. And how this works is everyone's on comeback and defense. As you can see, we've got the striker on, say, central false line to make an extra center mid, especially when we're trying to waste time outside the opponent's box or trying to prevent that constant pressure. So we've got both CDMs on cut passing lane, step out while attacking cover center, and the CDMs on cover center, stand edge of the box, and drop between defenders. So what happens is when, they, when you when you let's say you're let's say you're winning 2-0, okay? And let's say you, you don't want to play to a force as well, you need to stop constant pressure, you'll change this formation. The idea is a centre mid or someone you can sub off here will end up making a back line of five when you're attacking and two CDMs. Therefore, it's making the most defensive formation when you're attacking and the best chance to stop A counter-attacks and constant pressure. And these are the, the, the tactics for the left back and right back. It's pretty self-explanatory this tactic. So that is the one if, for example, you're inside a game. As I mentioned, and you need to stop constant pressure. But there's sometimes, and people have been saying to me, you know what, Neil, last week, your 4 2 3 1 was a very, very good tactic. But the problem was people struggled. So some of you were saying to stay forward, they need that cam to come back to fill in the space. Now you can use striker drop back and a few other things, but we made some couple of changes. So to make the 4 2 3 1 a bit more defensive, you can reduce the width up to, for example, 40 and reduce the depth to 35. Okay. I keep long ball forward runs on 40. If you want to, um, for forward runs, you can use either direct passing. If you're on new gen, you may prefer direct passing. If you're on old gen, you may prefer forward runs. I personally on new gen prefer direct passing and forward runs on old gen. It's personal preference. Use both, see what suits your play style because it depends on how you play, which is very, very important. You can, of course, reduce the players in the box. You want to make it a tad bit more defensive, but I'm fine with this. So apart from the depth, what's, what's the change that we made? Now we put stay central, come back in defense for the cam. Now the reason why we did this is because um, for both the cam and the striker, now what people are saying to me, no, the problem is, is that when you use this formation, you don't want to go to the 4-3-3 all the time. Let's say you're winning 2-1. You don't want to be going to the 4-3-3 because you're almost too defensive. You want to still have pressure. You still want to be able to go forward. And that's why I use the 4-2-3-1. So what we've done is we put the striker and the cam on comeback and offense. Now, to be honest, if you watched last week's video, I had both these players on stay forward. If I was you, if you're in a game when you're winning 2-1, just pause the game, put both these guys on comeback and offense. That would be the quick solution. For those that don't want to go through that, just put them both on comeback and offense. I will still put get it behind for the striker, especially the strikers on comeback and offense. Lamb and Ram, both on balance. You can always force them to get into the box across if you want to. I have my cam get into the box for cross because when I get down the wing, I want that player. Don't forget, this is only for supports on crosses in those situations. Both CDMs cut passing, stay back while attacking the cover center. 
left back and right back to make it more defensive as well just put conservative and overlap for left back and right back this will make it a bit more defensive so it will still attack in the exact same way it's that it will defend a bit better so the attack maybe you lose a little bit of counter attack because the, the, the cam is not as forward as much he won't be here he'll be a bit more conservative but at least this way it's more defensive people are saying against the 442 when they get matched they need to bring that cam back so hopefully that will be a good solution uh, same thing with um, the 352. We just reduced with the width. You can reduce it a little bit. I just, I just I'm doing a bit of trial and error here. We did 55 width and depth. Um, width we just reduced a little bit again for the similar type aspect. Now uh, the the build up play. Now this is very important, guys. If you want to make this more defensive, you can use slow build up play. But listen, hear me out. It makes the formation too slow, in my opinion. I think especially when you're losing 2-1, you don't want your players to be so slow. Especially when, like, let's say you're using a 4-2-3-1, you're losing 2-1, and you're realizing, you know what, I'm with this formation, I can't score. When you want to go to this one, you want to be a bit quicker. So I would I would say you can use slow build-up play only if you use L1 triggers yourself. I would say go with balanced or long ball. That's what I would say. Do not go fast build-up play. If you do want to apply a bit more pressure, you can always use the defensive styles. But in my opinion, the way that I would do it is use a D-pad tactic. Just use team press and a deep pad, and that solves the issue. Now, as I mentioned, people are saying to me, hey, look, no, there's a problem. Um, it's For me, sometimes it's too attacking. The simple solution to make this less attacking is to put come back on defense on one of the strikers. So when you defend, you defend in a 5-3-1-1. One, one. That's a simple solution, okay? If you, if, you, if you find this to be very attacking and you like it the way it is, then put both the strikers on stay forward and get into um, stay forward and get in get in behind to stay central. Cam on stay forward. I leave these on stay forward. I think it's so so important. People use, use on balance. I prefer stay forward. Left mid, right mid, come back in the fence, get into the box, get in behind. Both CDMs cut passing lanes through right and cover center. You can always put one of these on balance. You want to be a bit more attacking. And left center back and right center back on overlap. Again, if you want to make it a bit more defensive just remove the overlap because i know mo most of you guys just uh want to adapt it for your play style and of course most of you guys are just going to copy and paste but i'm sure there's 30 percent of you guys that are watching this thinking you know what neil i'm copying and pasting your tactics but i still want to alter a few things here and there for my play style and that is basically that so that would be the formation if let's say for example you're in the side of the game and of course you are in a situation where you're losing and a force zone is a bit too defensive and then we go to the 4 triple 2 Now, um, oh, I forgot to say, I'm said this video is sponsored by my Patreon series, patreon.com forward slash no guides. Want to get better at FIFA? Come to my Patreon series, Patreon series, should I say? FIFA school series. If you don't get better after one month, I'll refund your money. That is a nil guides guarantee. Um, the ball, scoop, other skill moves, other tactics. Of course, the Division 10 to Elite Division series as well. Uh, but anyway, going back into it. So the 4 triple 2 what we've done basically is I've changed the 4 triple 2 for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, the 4 4 2 is a good formation and I still like it. I just find the 4, two, four triple 2 is a bit more attacking. To be honest, I was kind of got the idea from some other players. Now, I used to delve into the, I'll explain to you the reasons why. I prefer the 4 4 2 better for pressing, okay? This is the better pressing formation and this is the better 4 4 2 attacking formation. And I don't like my left mid and right mid to be so wide. I like them to be a bit more centralized. And you can't really do that with a 4-4-2. So what I've done basically is I increased the width and the depth. And the idea is, is I want to replicate to be as wide as possible. Similar to a 4-4-2 when you're defending. Be as wide as possible and high up the pitch. Now this is the formation to use if your opponent's holding the ball and he's wasting time. Or if you just want to apply pressure. I know a lot of you guys use this 442 quite a lot. So these are the tactics. Reduce the width a little bit as well. Or increase it, should I say, rather than 442. Now, constant pressure for most of you guys, what I'd recommend. Because a lot of players, they don't use team press D. If you don't use team press D pad tactics, ignore what I'm going to say. In fact, skip for the next 30 seconds. If you use D pad tactics, leave this on present position loss. The reason why is sometimes, for example, you might want to go to the 4-2-3-1 straight to the 4 triple 2 but you don't want to go constant pressure. So the idea is you can use this as a very attacking formation and still play with a 4-4-2. And if you need to, you can always pause the game, 
Turn is the constant pressure of your opponent's wasting time. Let's say you're losing 2 0 at 70 minutes and you need to win the ball back and he's holding the ball and he's wasting time. Or you can just use team press. So that's why I would say leave it on plus of possession loss. So that way you can change it and use it as a 4 4 2 tactic. And then, of course, activate constant pressure if you need to. That's kind of my quick tips. That's what I have pressed possession loss on it. Um, you're going to see because I want, I want to make a, a video this week. Uh, hopefully this weekend is, uh, maybe this weekend, uh, doing foot champions in one hour. I tried that last week. It worked well. I want to see if I can do it this week in a video format properly. Um, st now, stay forward, stay central for both. I would say for one, these guys put them on comeback and defense. Now, understand this. It doesn't make them come back in the fence. It doesn't make them a cam. It doesn't make them defend the 4 2 3 1. It just makes them go like this. Think of it as like a striker and someone just behind them. That's how a lineup. Now, the reason for this is actually very, very important. When you're pressing, they're still going to be together for you to press. But the reason is if your opponent's got two center backs, you're going to be stuck man for man. By having one of these players just behind allows you to get the ball. And kind of soak this defender in or it gives you time to turn around that's the reason why i did this okay stay central for both of them um, i left them both unbalanced uh, personally speaking this is a personal preference for myself feel free to change if you want to but i leave some balance just because when someone's parking the bus or wasting time i like to get the ball to their feet both the lamb and the ram on comeback and defense cdn cut past and step out taking cover center the most attacking center mid, you either put them on get forward or you can leave them on balanced. It's completely up to you, entirely up to you, I would say. I leave them both on stay back. And for the reason is, I just trigger them at myself manually forward with the L1 button. If you don't do that, just use get uh, stri uh, come balanced, I would say. Try to look for a high, high or high medium work rate or get forward. Um, left back and right back, just stay back. And a left back and right back, just stay back. Because I still want them to be a bit more aggressive. And I think you don't really need conservative unless you're being really defensive. So the idea is I will change this formation when I need to. So that is my team. Okay. And then what happens is basically my the balance tactic is a tactic that I don't use. It's basically my anti-kickoff tactic. So what I would recommend is put everything like on 30-ish. Don't forget, you're not going to use this tactic inside the game. I actually put a slow build up play on it as well from kickoff. So people don't just, people just don't start running forward. You might not like that, but I'll leave that for security. And then on, on instructions, just put everyone on comeback and defense. So the idea behind this tactic is, remember, if your opponent kicks off first, you, you're going to start. Remember, when a game starts, it takes about a couple of minutes, one second, before you change any formation, it takes like a couple of minutes in game. So the idea behind this balance tactic is, is that when the game starts, um, my player is all on comeback and defense, and it stops the kickoff. So that way, if, I'm playing, if you're playing foot champions or you're going for your Elite 1 division game, at least you don't get that kickoff goal, or at least statistically you reduce the chance. I always put the center mid on drop between defenders as well, just for added security to make a back five. And that also stops off the kickoff and the left back wrapper and step back. So everyone's a comeback and defense, and a center mid on is going to be on drop between defenders. And everyone always gets confused with this, okay? This would just depend on how you set up. For example, in this formation, I have to set up this way to give my players chemistry, okay? To give them chemistry. So that is why my four, uh, that's why if you look at my balance tactic, it's, as you can see, the four, five, one. So just remember that. But anyway, guys, that is my weekly tennis update. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, the video is supposed to my Patreon series, patreon.com forward slash no guys. The link is down below in the description. So more going to be releasing a tactics video in case you're wondering, that would be on this one over here. It would be the 4231 second variation for those that are wondering on that. That will be out tomorrow. A bit more defensive, and I'll explain that as well. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Take it easy, of course. I'll catch you next time. Peace out, guys.